We saw previously that one of the ways that we can decorate input streams and output streams is to give them the ability to write binary data in bigger chunks than individual bytes. So the data input stream and the data output stream are types that have methods that can read or write things like ints or doubles. We said that we could do it. Well, it's good to actually look at an example. And in doing this example, we are going to extend our loan pattern so that we have uh, patterns that work with the data output stream and a data input stream. So a data output stream of A would take a file name, which is a string, and then the body of our function. Now this body is going to take a data output stream. It's going to return an A. Oops, sorry. Data output stream rocket A, because it's a function. We'll import that. And it's actually going to look a lot like kind of what we have here, except not an input stream, but an output stream. So I will call it data output stream is a new data output stream wrapped around a buffered output stream wrapped around a file output stream of whatever our file name is. Okay. We should import those. And then we can do our try, catch, finally. Uh, we don't actually, we're not, we don't have a catch on these like the one above. Just sounds right to say catch after a try. We are going to do the body of our code and pass it our data output stream and then make sure that we close our data output stream. So now that we've written that, what could we write? Well, let's go ahead and IO streams. Let's make a new app and we're just going to call it write binary arrays. Maybe I could have done read write binary arrays. I don't know. I want to import loan loan pattern dot underscore and then let's do a call to with DOS of the yeah array dot bin that'll be the name of our file and what we're going to do here DOS rocket whatever so I'm going to make an array that is some random numbers. We'll make 10 random values. And then I want to write them out to a file and I want to read them back in and verify that we get the same numbers. And we also want to look at that file to see what it looks like. So how do I write this array out? Well, given what we know right now, if I want to write the array out, I should probably write how long it is and then write all the values. So dos.write int of that array's length. And then I will write all the individual values, which I guess I could do this with a for each on, could do this with for loop or for each. <clears throat> and that will be dos.write double and I want to execute that on each element. So that will write our 10 elements out after writing the length. The reason for writing the length, if this is the only thing in the file, well, then I really don't need to do that because the size of the file, I can figure out how big it is. But if this were part of more data that we had put in a binary file, which is normally how things would work, it, I would need to know the length so that when I read things back in, I can uh, do it appropriately. Let's try writing that. Oh boy, um, file not found exception file.txt. Oh, that's right. We still have this line right here, which I will utilize. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, no output at all. But if I come over here and I refresh my project, 
there is an array.bin. And uh, let's see. What does the context, uh, contents of that file look like? I'm going to first try to cat it. So let's go into my workspace and then into video code. And I'm going to cat array.bin. Wow, that's an interesting file, isn't it? This is a binary file. The contents of it do not print out nicely. If you want to look at binary contents, it's often helpful to use a tool like XXD, which is a hex editor. Uh, it can be used for editing. It's mainly a hex display. And so it shows you the contents of the files, but it, but it also shows you them to you in hexadecimal. Uh, the first part here, A in hex is 10. So that right there is our integer 10 at the beginning of the file. And then that is our first random number, and that is our second random number, etc. And so there are 10 random numbers in there. Clearly, the binary format is not something that we can easily edit by hand. And so that's the real disadvantage of binary format files. The advantage of binary format files is, actually there are two. One is the size of the files. They are typically smaller than the text would be. So if I look at this file, this file is 84 bytes. If I had written this all out in text, it probably would have written about at least 15 characters for every number, so it would have been easily twice this size. Um, in addition, they should be faster, because normally when you write and read things in text, you do a conversion to decimal, write out the decimal, and then when you read them back in, you read them in in decimal and have to convert them back to binary. So the binary data is faster and it's generally smaller, but it is not as editable. You cannot easily play with the data the way you can with with text. Now, I have this data out here. It would be nice to actually read it back in and make sure that it was correct. Now, of course, I'm going to, if I run this, I'm going to get new random data. In order to do that, we need to go back to our loan pattern and we are going to write a death with data input stream of A. And this will be file name as a string, the body is a data input stream, goes to A, and the whole thing returns an A. Now, of course, for writing, I didn't utilize that. The code that we passed into here is just a for each, so it's giving us back unit. But this one could do something more interesting. And let's actually pull this line up to there. make it worth with our file name try finally and inside of here I will say close and this will run the body on this now because our we made this so it returns a value we can actually do something like this val arr2 equals with dis of array dot bin our function will do that and I am just going to do array dot fill of dis dot read int because that is the the first thing we wrote out was the length of the array and that is the first argument to a fill and then followed by redouble so this many doubles will be read in from the file that is actually going to be given back here as the value from the body which will then be stored in array 2 and then we can print the two of them um, Arrays don't print nicely, so array dot make string. Oops, <laughs> wrong editor. I've gotten used. To, I was doing stuff in VI recently, so, and then we can do the same thing with our second array, and you can see that the contents are indeed the same. Now, 
our file out here has actually changed because we have new random numbers in it. So you'll see that all of these values after the A are different, but we were able to read it in and reestablish the data that we had. So <clears throat> this kind of shows you how you can work with binary data, but it does also show you that you have to have kind of a program that's going to work with binary data, uh, especially for things like doubles. For instance, you could possibly figure it out, use a program like XXD and edit the hexadecimal, but it's not how you want to be working with things. You use binary data because you need the speed or because you need the smaller format. And, and there are also some other reasons uh, dealing with direct access that we won't talk about at this point because we are streaming data. That's a, a later lesson for that. <clears throat> but there are a number of reasons why you like to use binary data. You just have to realize that when you go with the binary data route, it's no longer human readable or human editable.